Killers of the Flower Moon recently received a nine-minute standing ovation following its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. It's one of the most expensive motion pictures ever filmed in Oklahoma, and it will be released in theaters in October. It's the kind of film that Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell would like to see made more often in our state, but he says more help is needed to grow the industry here in Oklahoma. Pinnell joined the executive director of the Dead Center Film Festival to discuss that and more with in-depth moderator Reese Wetzel. Thank you, Rich. And today we are talking about a growing and exciting industry here in Oklahoma, the film industry. And joining us to do that, we have Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell and Kaki Porch, Executive Director at Dead Center Film. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, Lieutenant Governor, I'm going to start with you here. You tasked the legislature to put more money into the film industry. There's currently $30 million in the film industry. How much more do you think is needed and why? Yeah, I mean, we, we have legislation to raise that cap to about $80 million. And, and one of the reasons is because we turned away over $80 million worth of business last year. Wow. Over the last few years, we were turning away far more business than we are able to take in inside the state of Oklahoma. I mean, that, that, that really is like turning away $80 million worth of economic development projects for the state of Oklahoma. That's, that's the way that we should be looking at it. Uh, there's a great return on the investment uh, with where the rebate is and where we want to take the rebate. And so this will be an ongoing conversation between now and next legislative session when we go in in February. You know, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. Uh, Texas just passed a rebate program, $100 million a year for two years, so a $200 million investment because they were so jealous of Oklahoma. Uh, and that's a fact. that They just got that done. Uh, we're more diverse than them. We've got a better crew base than Texas now because of what we've built over the last 10 years. So if we're going to have a film and television industry, let's do it right. Uh, and that's going to take raising that cap. Yeah, great. Uh, all right, Kaki, so you work with Dead Center Film. You recently had the Dead Center Film Festival. How has that grown? I mean, did you see people coming in from out of state, Oklahomans? I mean, how is that building on the film industry in Oklahoma? Oh, yes, absolutely. So we, I mean, talking about things that are happening right now, Twisters, the cast and crew came to our film festival. We also had attendees, believe it or not, from Australia, from all of the United States. And we actually have drawn people from literally all over the globe since we were founded in, you know, in 2001. So over the last two decades, we've had people from England and Spain and all the United States. And every time they come here, they're so surprised at how amazing Oklahoma is. And I think that's something that's really great uh, to spread the word about um, what, what a dynamic city state we have here. And we're very friend, uh, film friendly. And I think we really honor filmmakers when they're here and they have a great time. We honor our sponsors. And um, so I think it, it helps to give a voice to those filmmakers. And when they come here, they have a great time. Yeah. I mean, speaking of Twister, we just saw recently about a month ago, New York City was downtown Oklahoma City. They, they transformed it. I mean, does that speak to the versatility that Oklahoma has to offer? Yeah, it is. I mean, and, you know, there's another piece to, to having the remake of Twister here again. It's the weather research uh, industry. Uh, that's a global industry, and we have the National Weather Center right there in Norman. So there's a lot of talk right now about further expanding out the National Weather Center, the National Weather Museum that we have in Norman as well. Uh, we still have Dorothy in a small little museum in Waleka, Oklahoma, that 25 years later is still a major tourism attraction for the state of Oklahoma. So the, once a movie is filmed, there's the economic impact of, of obviously the film itself, but then the long tail of all the economic development that comes for decades and decades after a lot of those movies are filmed right here in the state. Well, a lot of people like to tour where a site was filmed for, you know, I went to London just to see where a spot was filmed. So could people with Killers of the Flower Moon be coming to see, you know, parts of Oklahoma that are in that movie? Do you think that's a possibility? Absolutely. We're having conversations with the Osage uh, with it, with Visit the Osage right now of kind of creating kind of a movie trail. Uh, p places that the Osage Nation are going to be okay with us, you know, sending tourists. But, you know, people have been reading that book for four or five years and they show up in downtown Fairfax and are looking for those locations already. So it's already happening and it's going to happen a whole lot more when that movie comes out. Yeah, it'll be great. Kaki, how have you seen this industry grow since you started working with Dead Center? We have production studios in Oklahoma now. What's it been like? Uh, very exciting. So, I mean, that's, you know, decades ago, we had to beg Oklahoma filmmakers just to submit their films because there wasn't enough product happening here in the state. And uh, now, I mean, just this last festival, we had two Oklahoma short blocks. We had multiple Oklahoma features. And those were a lot of films that we had to turn away. We, we have over 2,000 submissions every year. So we are, yeah, turning away films that, um, that um, is significant for Dead Center, but also for the state. Um, and um, I think that 
it's exciting to see how much the film industry has grown. Uh, we have a lot of um, investment in training uh, courses here, you know, Oklahoma City Community Foundation and OCU and also the Metro Techs have done a great job of, of, of um, providing structure for crew members. And I think it's a really great thing. Something that we do, we do educational outreach to rural Oklahoma and we really want um, Oklahomans to tell their stories and a, a great example is Sterling Harjo, who was a, an award winner in 2005 and now has Reservation Dogs, which is filmed in Oklahoma and we're on se we're, you know, season four, yeah. which is really exciting for our state. All right, well, I, wanna ask, I wanna ask both of you, why Oklahoma? Why have film companies come here? What makes it so appealing? Well, we have 12 different ecosystems inside the state. Most people don't realize how diverse Oklahoma is in both our landscape and in our people. So, you know, that, that's a huge reason to draw people in for them to see how great Oklahoma is. We, I, I've seen this with our tourism industry for a very long time now. When we can get people to Oklahoma, we sell really well. And so when we can get uh, an industry like a film and television industry that comes in to shoot that, uh, the, the impact, I mean, the domino effect there uh, is huge. But diversifying our economy, I talk about it all the time. Uh, we, we need to get more diversified as an economy. Uh, that over a $200 million fiscal impact uh, just over the last two years with the 66 productions that tapped into our rebate program. You have 150 productions on top of that that didn't even tap into the rebate program. So it's an, it's an industry that's putting a whole lot of people to work. Uh, over 15,000 people over the last couple years in just those 66 productions in over 77 towns. So th this is a statewide impact that's helping rebrand the state of Oklahoma as a very diverse place to live, work, and raise a family. Yeah. I agree, yes, and, and to yeah, comment on that as well, something that I have heard from a lot of LA filmmakers is that the crew members are, uh, have great attitude and, so, and want to work. I mean, back when William H. Macy did Rudderless, he was so surprised at how uh, gung-ho everyone was at 2 a.m., that they still wanted to work, they wanted to get the shot, they wanted to make sure that everyone was, you know, um, getting what they needed to, to, to get a film done here in Oklahoma. And I think that is across the board and that's, that's, that's the Oklahoma spirit that we have. And I think it's very effective for the film industry. And well, some might argue, speaking to the jobs, that they're temporary jobs. What do you say to that? How do you say that, well, they're not temporary, uh, well, what's your viewpoint on that? Yeah, they're not temporary in Atlanta, Georgia. They're not temporary in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, because their rebate is at a level to where there's reoccurring films and television shows 12 months out of a year. Uh, so right now, with a $30 million capped rebate, we can do a couple big productions. We can do reservation dogs and a few other things. You're now creating crew bases that can go from one production to another production. Uh, but I would also argue, let's not discount every hotel room that's being filled, every, every caterer that's booked for six months, uh, the construction industry that just frankly exploded during a global pandemic when, in Northeast Oklahoma when we were filling Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, that was an economic impact that, uh, that, that Northeast Oklahoma was not going to get during that global pandemic. So that, uh, the, the local, you know, the six month hit, a uh, good hit, along with again, that, those reoccurring jobs, you now have a really good one-two punch that we can argue. Well, what can it do for these rural communities? We speak to Fairfax and, you know, we're, before this we were talking about some things that were in development to try and help make tours of the area and, and things like that. I mean, how does this help these rural communities? Yeah, we got 77 counties uh, across Oklahoma and a lot of these film productions are outside of Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Uh, yes, we're very proud that Oklahoma City has the largest soundstage in the Midwest, Prairie Surf. We love that. Tulsa, Cherokee Nation, uh, it, uh, one of our sovereigns in Northeast Oklahoma is doing amazing work with film and television as well. But most of this business, most of these outdoor shoots in particular are done in rural Oklahoma. Yeah, and, yeah, and that and as he said, you know, that is hotels, that is restaurants, that is um, transportation. I mean, that is construction, that is welding. So it is truly a multi, you know, it is it, it is such a wide industry that really everyone has a seat at the table. And he did mention, you know, some other studios, and it is exciting to see the studios grow in Oklahoma. I mean, there's also, you know, Green Pastures, which is in Spencer, Oklahoma, and Notice Studios is a new studio. There's Castle Row in Dell City. And so things like that, I think, will continue to grow as we continue to to grow our film industry. So we're talking about tourism and travel. I mean, how can we bring more people in with these films? Is it gonna keep happening? Is it a strike while the iron is hot type of situation? Both of you can answer this question. Yeah, you know, Oklahoma, best year in state history from a, a tourism perspective last year, over $10.2 billion in direct visitor spending. Uh, that number is only gonna go up as we increase our film and television productions inside the state. You see what's happened in Albuquerque, New Mexico, what's happened in Atlanta, Georgia. 
Uh, you have a lot of movie trails that are that have taken place that have popped up in those. You have uh, tours, bus tours, you know, private entrepreneurs that have come in that are you know taking uh, uh, taking fans of movies and television shows around to different sets uh, in those communities. That that's a real impact from a sales tax perspective. Oklahoma is one of the most sales tax dependent states in the country. When we can create sales tax, it helps small towns and large towns combined. In that movie industry. Uh, again, once that movie is shot, there's a huge sales tax component to this that uh, is a big reason why we need to increase the cap as well. Kaki, yeah. when you work at Dead Center with, with filmmakers, is it independent films? Are you trying to grow Oklahoma filmmakers, or do you work with outside influences as well? Oh, well, gosh. Well, we, I mean, as I said, we had uh, 2,000 submissions, so we are we are getting films from all over the world. Uh, we will always honor our Oklahoma filmmakers. That's usually 25% of what we screen at Dead Center. But yes, it's it's always very, very exciting to have all the visiting filmmakers from all across all across the world. And um, so that's, um, and, and, and showing those voices, like we had, I mean, there was a film that was actually done about the Hurricanes, which was a female football team in Houston, mm -hmm. but it featured the Oklahoma City Dolls. So there's a lot of tie-ins to a lot of films um, that I think are very exciting and really showing those voices and having a conversation around all those films creates a, a wonderful community that I think will just continue to grow and grow. All right, Lieutenant Governor, we're going to switch gears here just a little bit. We're looking at tourism coming out of the 4th of July weekend. How do we get more people to our state parks? How do we keep expanding this? How do we capitalize on this tourism? Yeah, well, thankfully, over the last couple of years, we, we've invested over $50 million fixing our state parks. Uh, you know, we had, we had lodges and bathrooms that uh, were not up to par. And uh, now we've had a huge influx in tourists over the last few years, some of it due to a global pandemic. Uh, we didn't shut down our parks. Uh, the lodges were closed, but people could go walk in the woods all they wanted. Uh, we had three and a half million more people show up at our state parks last year than the year before. So one of them is we, sh we should demand more than just being okay. Uh, accepting mediocrity when it comes to our state park system or, or anywhere in any in agency is not acceptable to me as lieutenant governor. So we've put a lot, we've invested money and when you invest money, taxpayers usually re reward that investment. Uh, so again, one of the best years on record for our state parks. Outdoor recreation is through the roof right now. Uh, RV sales, all time high in this country. So to your point, we have to take advantage of this environment and Oklahoma certainly is. All right, Kaki. So when you're working with um, the film industry, how do you want it to grow in these next years? Where do you see it going in the next few years? Oh gosh, well, I mean, I, I truly, truly believe the sky's the limit. Um, and I love, I love hearing that, you know, that, that, that the Lieutenant Governor is, is so invested in increasing the cap and increasing investment in film. I think that is the right attitude we need in Oklahoma and I absolutely applaud it. I think it's the best. Um, but because also, as we've talked about, it's more, it's more jobs. It just grows the economy on the whole across the entire state. And so, I mean, something I would like to see is for, I mean, all of it to grow and I th and I think that we can all grow together because it's so it's so vast the needs that ha are in the film industry and that's one thing that I love about Dead Center is that everyone comes to Dead Center together and we can watch films together and have you know conversations together and all the films that have been you know shot here or around the United States or around the world can uh, come here to Oklahoma and uh, and we can all have a conversation about it. And how does Oklahoma compete with surrounding states with incentive packages and things like that? Is that part of the legislator's job, legislature's job to, to kind of promote that and help get incentives that other states might not have? Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, I've jokingly said, you know, when we created the film rebate program decades and decades ago, is the Compete with Canada Act. Uh, I believe now it should be the Compete with Texas Act uh, in, a, in a lot of ways. Uh, there's a lot of states that are getting in this because it's a good return on the investment for the taxpayer. And it creates a lot of jobs, a lot of jobs that, again, next generation talent in this state want to get into this industry. Uh, we have one of the best career tech systems in the entire country already. It's us in Georgia at the top of the list. We now have our career tech uh, system teaching all of these classes. You know, within 18 months, you can go right onto a movie set. Uh, that's very powerful, and it's something that I think over the next decade is going to continue to grow in Oklahoma because you have support from Republicans, Democrats, and independents alike wanting to make sure that we help diversify our economy and give kids in this state every opportunity to be able to stay in this state. Yeah, we look at you know Oklahoma's economy, oil and gas, aerospace. Do you think film industry is next? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, as, as we've said, well, I mean, I, I think we've already had a huge impact. I mean, I, as, I, I think that Prairie Surfer was at a $55 million impact, I think, just last year, and that's just one studio. So, I mean, yeah, I, 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 this is absolutely an industry that is ripe for growth, and Oklahoma is ready. 
well, how do you make sure that you, you get this done in the right manner? Because is this a situation where if you don't appeal to these, to these movie makers and these film production crews, will they leave and find somewhere else to go? How important is it to be early on this? Yeah, I mean, the, the rebate now is really baked into the cake of their budgets. I mean, they, they'll go to states that have rebate programs or have good crew bases. And so it's, it's, it's extremely important that we, we take advantage of this soon. We have an advantage that a lot of other states don't have, too, when, when we have our 39 sovereign nations inside of Oklahoma that are getting much more involved when it comes to film and television production. I think that's another, another reason for us to take advantage of this now, and it's another reason we're going to beat a whole lot of other states because of that relationship with our tribes. Well, we'll be looking forward to it. I want to thank you both, Kaki Porch and Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell. Thank you so much for joining us in this conversation. Thank, thank you. Me.